Greetings everyone. Welcome to Kite Lecture Series. And in today's video, we will be discussing about virtualization of CPU, memory, and I/O devices. So let's start. So first, we'll talk about CPU virtualization. So, uh, okay. So in CPU virtualization, I, I have already talked uh, about the concept of CPU virtualization in previous videos. So you will get a quick revision of that in this topic. To support virtualization, processors such as x86 employ a special running mode and instructions known as hardware assisted virtualization. In this way, VMM and guest operating system run in different modes and all the sensitive instruction of guest OS and its applications are trapped in VMM. Now in previous videos, I have talked about critical and non-critical instructions. Now they are talking in that context, right? They are saying that all the sensitive critical instructions are trapped in VM and all the non-sensitive or you can say non-critical instructions can be directly uh, sent to your hardware. Hardware support for virtualization. Modern operating systems and processors permit multiple processors to run simultaneously. If there is no protection mechanism in the processor, all instructions from different processes will access the hardware directly and cause a system crash. Therefore, all the processors have at least two modes, user mode and supervisor mode. To ensure controlled access of the critical hardware, instructions running in a supervisor mode are called privileged instructions and other instructions are and other instructions are unprivileged instructions in a virtualized environment it is more difficult to make operating systems and applications run correctly because there are more layers in machine stack so as i have said before the two types of instructions that we have discussed in previous videos that are critical and uncritical instructions processors also have two types of modes user mode and supervisor mode in supervisor mode all the critical instructions are handled or the critical uh, all the critical and privileged instructions are handled in user mode all the non critical instructions are handled so if we talk about unprivileged instructions the unprivileged instructions of the virtual machine run directly on the host machine for higher efficiency now they are saying is they are saying that there is no need of running an unprivileged instruction in a supervised mode or to run all those instructions through vmm because if every request is being uh, you know is every request is being satisfied by vmm or uh, hypervisor it will decrease the efficiency so they have actually segregated the instruction into two parts and all those unprivileged instructions which are not vulnerable to your system are directly run to your host machines. Other critical instruction should be handled carefully for correctness and stability. The critical instructions are divided into three categories. Privileged instructions, control sensitive instructions, behavior sensitive instruction. Privileged instructions execute in a privileged mode and will be trapped if executed outside this mode. Control sensitive instruction attempt to change the configuration of the resources used. Behavior sensitive instructions have different behaviors depending on the configuration of resources including load and store operation over the virtual memory. A CPU architecture is virtualizable if it supports the ability to run VM's privileged and unprivileged instruction in CPU user mode while VMM runs in supervisor mode. Now they're telling that you can virtualize a CPU if CPU runs all the instructions of virtual machine, whether it is privileged instruction, whether it is unprivileged instruction in a CPU's user mode and 
VMM runs in a supervisor mode. Now we all know that supervisor mode is having more priority and it is used to handle the privilege instructions. Even if the VM sends privilege instructions directly to the hardware, it will get rejected because VM is by default in user mode. And in user mode, only the unprivileged instructions gets accepted by the hardware directly. When the privileged instructions including control, behavior, sensitive of virtual machines are executed, they are trapped in VMM. Cisc CPU architectures can naturally virtualize because all the control and behavior instructions are privileged. On a contrary, x86 CPU architectures are not primarily designed to support virtualization. Virtual memory visualization is similar to virtual memory support provided by the modern operating system. In traditional environment, the operating system maintains page table for mapping virtual memory to machine memory, which is one stage mapping. Now here we are having two stage mapping. All the modern x86 CPU include a memory management unit and a translation look aside buffer TLB to optimize virtual memory performance. However, in virtual execution environment, the virtual memory virtualization involves sharing the physical system memory in a RAM and dynamically allocate it to physical memory of the VMs. A two-stage mapping process should be maintained by guest operating system and virtual machine monitor respectively. Virtual memory to physical memory and physical memory to machine memory. The VMM is responsible for mapping the guest physical memory to actual memory in guest OS. Since each page table of guest OS has a separate page in a VMM corresponding to it, the VMM page table is also called shadow page table. VMware uses shadow page table to perform virtual memory to machine memory address translation. Processes use TLB hardware to map virtual memory directly to the machine memory to avoid the two levels of translation on every access. When the guest OS changes the virtual memory to a physical memory mapping, the VMM updates the shadow page table to enable direct lookup. This is the diagram of uh, virtual memory mapping here uh, as you can see the virtual address memory is being mapped in a physical uh, page address memory and then physical page address memory is again mapped in a machine addressable memory. So there are two VMs first they get mapped with the physical PA memory and then they are mapped with machine MA memory. So that's why it is called two stage mapping. Now let's talk about the IO devices. IO devices involves managing the routing of IO requests between virtual devices and the shared physical hardware. There are three ways to implement IO devices. First is full device, uh, full device emulation. Second is para virtualization. And the third is direct IO. In full device emulation, all the functions of a device like device enumeration, identification, interrupts, and DMA are replicated in software and it is located in VMM and acts as a virtual device. The IO access requests of a guest operating system are trapped in VMM which interacts with IO devices. We have already uh, studied about para virtualization. It is a split driver model consisting of a front-end driver and a back-end driver. The front-end driver is running in domain U and a back-end driver is running in domain 0. So uh, let's talk about domain 0 and domain U. Uh, this is something that I have not told you before and uh, domain 0 is having the higher priority and domain U is having lesser priority than domain 0. They interact with each other via block of shared memory. The front-end driver manages the I.O. request of guest operating system and back-end drivers is responsible for managing the real I.O. devices and multiplexing the I.O. devices of different VMs. Although 
para io virtualization achieves better device performance than full device emulation it comes with a higher cpu overhead now the last one is direct io virtualization direct io virtualization lets the vm access devices directly it can achieve close to native performance without high cpu cost however current direct io virtualization implements focus on networking for mainframes there are lot of challenges for commodity hardware devices for example when a physical device is reclaimed required by a work for later reassignment it may have set to an arbitrary state example dma to some arbitrary memory locations that can functions incorrectly or even crash the whole system since software based io virtualization requires a very high overload of device emulation hardware assisted io virtualization is critical intel vtd supports and device generated interrupts the architecture of vtd provides the flexibility to support multiple usage models that may run unmodified special purpose or virtualization aware guest operating systems so that's all for today guys thank you so much stay fit stay blessed see you guys in the next video jai hind